I wrote this poem uh, two days ago, and it's Waiter. In a dream, I took a giant pair of scissors and cut a snippet of the Mississippi River. I live in the Midwest. I wrapped it like a thread around my finger and took it to the peoples of the world whose lands are short on water. Like a waiter before dinner, I poured the water freely and woke up filled with the wonder of one human hearing the thirst of another and not ignoring that anymore. A poem like Waiter suggests to us the healing of a single image, the snip of the Mississippi River, the solving of a problem. Mm. And your writing carries us. When I read your books, I imagine that I'm someone who's never been to Palestine and who doesn't know any of the story. Would I be transported there? Yes, I would be. And you really have that gift of carrying us into place, into land, into language, into food, into dust, into everything. And that is a tremendous gift of a writer and an activist and a voice for her people, for our people, for all people. And I thank you, Ibtissam, for everything you give. Thank you for your wisdom. And will you allow me to read very quickly two little poems? I beg you. Okay, very two little poems. So this is a recent poem written as... Uh, a Palestinian Texan living two and a half miles north, uh, I mean, two and a half hours north of the border. A Palestinian might say, is the title, what? You don't feel at home in your country almost overnight? All the simple things you cared about maybe took for granted? You feel insulted, invisible? almost as if you're not there, but you're there. Where before you mingled freely, appreciated people who weren't just like you, divisions grow stronger. That's what chosen and unchosen will do. Just keep your eyes on your houses and gardens. Keep your eyes on that tree in bloom. Yes. A wall. Ours came later, but who talks about how sad the land looks, marked by a massive wall? That's not a normal shadow. It's something else looming over your lives. And this is... Um, so, thank you. And this is recently after doing um, a two-hour Google, Skype, whatever it is, class with uh, kids in Gaza. Terrific readers and writers. They were 13, mostly. And they were amazing. And they all reminded me of you. <laughs> Cross the sea. A girl in Gaza speaks into a table microphone. Do you believe in infinity? If so, what does it look like to you? Not like a wall. Not like a soldier with a gun. Not like a ruined house bombed out of being. Not like concrete wreckage of a school's good hope, a clinic's best dream. In fact, not like anything imposed upon you and your family thus far in your precious 13 years. My infinity would be the never-ending light you deserve. Every road opening in front of you. Soberly, she nods her head. In our time, voices cross the sea easily. But sense is still difficult to come by. Next girl's question. Were you ever shy? <laughs> I wanted her to meet her. Right. 